Hello, I just wanted to show a quick update of my little project here, some of the things I've been working on over the past couple weeks, um, and especially the last week or two as our weather has been terrible for flying here. Uh, so I've been doing a lot of software work. Um, yeah, about a week and a half ago, we went out and flew at a little park called Elm Creek Park Preserve. It's not actually little. Uh, this is just one tiny spot of it. Uh, I think it's about, I don't know, 60 or 80 acre area here. Um, and uh, we captured 2,429 pictures. Uh, each of them are 24 megapixel images. Um, so quite a bit of data. So what I've done here is mosaic all the images together in a single uh, view, um, but all the images are still unique and separate, individual, and can be drawn um, drawn here in their entirety. Um, so, for example, I'm looking at a spot here. Um, I can actually on on my keyboard select the different images that cover the spot. As you can see, like the things that have height change slightly because of the perspective. And so I can, for example, toggle back and forth between two images. And you can see the basic ground doesn't change, but the things like the tufts of grass and the bushes will change a little bit. Um, as I move around, my center of view here, which is marked by the green reticle, um, will, um, I should have said that the other way, um, the system will load an image that is best centered over that, that center of view. So as I scroll and move, um, I just got to pause for a second and it will load the latest image. And I can zoom way in, um, zoom out, see the whole overview and it's kind of nice having the full detail of the image because you know you can zoom way in and see individual blades of grass um, and you can pan around and zoom in and out just like a Google map but you're actually looking at the actual images not some sort of ortho mosaic uh, composite um, where some algorithm has picked which images you're going to see, um, you get to pick them. So this is actually quite nice for hunting through your imagery and for looking for details. Um, so for example, maybe I'll go right here. You can actually zoom in and see some nicely colored berries here. I believe this is called American Bittersweet, um, which is just, it's found quite a few places in this park, um, and it's totally fine. It's a it's a native plant to Minnesota, um, but they're also finding something called Oriental Bittersweet, which is not okay. Um, it can wrap itself around trees and break off branches. Uh, it spreads rapidly. It's hard to get rid of. Um, so part of this project is to take detailed surveys like this so that we can look through the imagery and see if we can find um, oriental bittersweet that we might have missed. So this again looks like uh, it's probably going to be American bittersweet and I'm just going to mark it. Here's a willow tree. kind of nice this imagery is so detailed you can almost go in and read license plates um, we we're taking pictures from about 150 feet above the ground um, sadly we don't quite have the right angle to see the license plate but if someone would have maybe left their tailgate open you might actually be able to almost read that license plate eh, almost This is a really interesting park. Um, there's just such a variety of things here to look at. Um, this is kind of cool. They did a, a planting of a whole bunch of seedlings. Um, 
and just because of the weather we've had a lot of uh, melting and freezing um, now last week we had a lot of freezing um, so you see this sort of weird puddle frozen puddle sort of um, texture sort of thing for example I'm looking in here there's a seedling it's got something around it but it's hard to tell I might not even notice it but if I look at different vantage points maybe you can see how the things that have height you can actually see the different sides of things from whatever pictures you have available again this this can be really helpful if you know for whatever reason a picture turned out especially blurry uh, you can look at the other views um, like I say looking looking at the different perspectives is pretty handy there's some frozen water features over here which are kinda cool um, you can see tons and tons of animal tracks out here uh, all through the area lots of human tracks I'm not sure what that is Uh, this feature that snakes through north to south is a is a bike trail. A lot of people go out to hike on this. You can see tons of human footprints. Again, you can zoom in and see heel toe, heel toe. You can see that yellow dash, yellow painted line there that uh, is beneath the snow. Here you can see it a little better. Over here you can zoom in and you can see snowmobile tracks. It's actually quite addicting to to look through these pictures. I don't know if I mentioned that uh, it was a very hazy, drizzly day when we took these images. Um, so actually pretty low light, so we had to push the ISO on the camera pretty high to get the pictures to turn out. So I think that kind of led to, in, in a lot of areas, um, some of the color details sort of smudged together. Uh, which is a little too bad, but uh, this is a Sony A6000 camera, which actually does really well handle quite a variety of lighting conditions. Yeah, so you can kind of get in here and see some of the some of the detail of these whatever kind of bushes these are that have dropped their leaves. And again it's showing you the highest resolution detail here of this current image. And if I so I will get some weird artifacts around the edge here like with this willow tree. Um, just because of the perspective. Uh, but if I want to look at the willow tree, then I can just come over here and boom, I get an image that's centered with, has that in the center. And if I want to look at some different perspectives, I can do that. And you can see this image is, so this image is sharper than this image and that just happens. So it's nice to be able to select. Uh, I was going to say, you can whoop, zoom way in and even see detail. Sorry, this jumped on me a little. Ah, I see what's going on. I'm moving and it's changing the image it's selected, but there we go. Zoom in, see bark detail. Okay, I probably showed you guys enough here. Um, I just get lost in in exploring. Oh, oh, 
There's a nice painted line. Oh no, but it's obscured by a tree. I wonder if a different view would show a better view of that. Oh, still obscured. Still obscured. Try this one. Oh, that's getting better. But again, you notice as I change the views, the system has aligned all the images almost perfectly, so the surface um, is a perfect match between all these different images, and it's just the height detail, the trees, uh, the grasses, the bushes that, uh, that change when you switch from one image to the next. I know there's tons of other things that I could show you here. I could spend all night on it. It's a nice deer trail here we could follow. If we wanted to. Runs over here to this marshy area. And you can see these frozen frozen water features. This is all frozen ice here intermixed in the marsh. And there's oh there's this cool little island over here. This was down a little lower elevation, so it's not quite as clear. But again, look at all the different animal tracks out here. Tree fell over into the ice, or into the water, and then now it's frozen in there for now. Yeah. Again, you can see the edges of things, but as I move, um, the system keeps picking the best image it thinks to cover the area I'm looking at. And my computer is taking a pause, but there we go. Again, more water, more branches down, more tracks, more trees. So if you want to go get a really detailed view of your area that you're interested in. Um, this might be a nice tool. But it's a work in progress. Oh boy, I'm at 13 minutes. Okay. I'm going to sign off here because this is way too long. Thanks for watching. Um, and feel free to watch my channel here for possible future updates.